gentleman here with Piano Bench Chat number 60, and it's more Bach, of course. I start every day with Bach, so Bach's going to be on my mind. That was the very beginning of one of Bach's most beautiful pieces for keyboard, the prelude in the fairly unusual key of B-flat minor from book one of the Well-Tempered Clavier. It's uh, the prelude that I got to a couple of days ago, and one of the interesting things about playing Bach every day, and especially playing one of his preludes or fugues, is so many of these pieces, when you hear them, they bring back memories and connections to other times and other places in your life. And so it was with this piece because that brought to mind um, fairly recent memories from the years 2013 through 2016, when the Dayton Performing Arts Alliance was very fortunate to have a wonderful composer, Stella Sung, as our composer in residence. She was with us over that period of three years. Uh, we played a fair amount of her music during that time, and Stella wrote three brand new pieces for the DPAA, one for the ballet, a wonderful um, ballet score called Signs, uh, also Fate of Place. I think Signs was Stella's name for the music and Fate of Place was Karen Russo Brooks' name for the ballet. also wrote um, a very fun piece called Farmer Glorp, which is the soundtrack to an animated film that was made by students of Stella's from the University of Central Florida. which capped off her residency with the Dayton Performing Arts Alliance was a brand new one act opera that she wrote for Dayton Opera called The Book Collector. And one of the interesting things about The Book Collector is that within that opera, Stella several times wrote pieces which were modeled on pieces by Bach. And one of them is this very beautiful aria for the main soprano character, Anna. Uh, it's a prayer aria. It takes place uh, at a very emotional point in this very powerful and emotional story. And Anna goes to a church to pray for guidance. And that's when Stella decided that she was going to use that prelude in B-flat minor as the basis for the aria. And as I was playing the, uh, the prelude a couple of days ago and flashing back to those years, I also flashed back to the workshop process because Stella didn't just write this piece for us before it was uh, performed, almost about a year before it was performed. We did a week long workshop with singers and a pianist and Stella and me and a dramaturg who ended up being our stage director as we worked on the piece as it was in the process of, of coming in together. And speaking of workshops for brand new operas, Dayton Opera just recently completed a workshop week for the new opera Finding Right by Laura Kaminsky, which will get its premiere on Dayton Opera's 2021-2022 season. The singers were in town, and just as we did for the book collector, they worked for a whole week on the show. It's a very exciting time in the development of a new opera, and just as we did five years ago with the book collector, now the same process is going on with Finding Right, which will be an exciting part of the upcoming season. And this aria was one of the things that Stella worked on a lot during that week. She, she did a lot of rewrites based on the how things were going in the workshop. And I remember Stella and I sat at this very piano working on this piece together. And Stella originally conceived of it as a piece for soprano with string accompaniment. And I talked her into um, adding an oboe solo 
Again, a sort of homage to Bach because so many of Bach's beautiful arias and his cantatas uh, have, in addition to a solo voice, have an instrumental voice that kind of intertwines with the singer. And I suggested oboe because so many of Bach's beautiful uh, arias have wonderful oboe solos. They're called obligatos in the, the fancy musical terminology. And also we have an amazing principal oboist in Eileen Whalen. And uh, Stella, uh, she paused a little bit because it's actually kind of challenging. Bach, in this prelude, it's in five and sometimes six voices. It kind of fills up the musical, the available musical space. So the first thing that Stella had to do was write a line, a melodic line for the soprano, which would weave in and out of Bach's music. And then I was asking her to add another line in the same register for the oboe weaving in and out. And it was actually a pretty complicated assignment, but Stella did an amazing job with this prayer aria. And uh, I thought I would share uh, some of it with you. Uh, as you'll see in this excerpt, which uh, came from our performance of the opera, um, that was, what, six years ago, and uh, our video archiving capability is somewhat better now, so it's not the highest quality video, uh, but you'll, you'll hear the music and you'll hear the beautiful singing of soprano Angela Mortolaro and uh, hear some of Stella's wonderful prayer aria from The Book Collector. Thanks for watching this Piano Bench Chat, and I'll see you next week for number 61. Take care.